Pues estamos hoy en la temporada Solo hay un Bach en su tercera edición en homenaje al cronista de Nagonagua, Francisco Armando Alcántara Borges. Hoy es un día muy especial, estamos recibiendo al maestro Dietrich Henschel. Uh, well, we have the pleasure and we have the honor to present in this season Bach, in the third edition of the season Bach, maestro Dietrich Henschel. And I'm going to talk about his career and his amazing job and work as a great baritone and as, and as for me and for many others, one of the greatest singers of all time in our time. The baritone Dietrich Henschel is known as a regular guest at major opera houses, as a valued interpreter of song and oratorio, as the inventor and protagonist of a wide range of multimedia projects. His repertoire ranges from Monteverdi to the avant-garde. Henschel began his international career with a co-production between Opera of Lyon and Théâtre du Châtelet, Paris in the title role of Busoni's opera Dr. Faust, for which he won a Grammy Award. The singer's leading roles include Rossini's Figaro, Wolfram in Wagner's Tannhauser, Monteverdi's Willis and Orfeo, Mozart Don Giovanni, Alban Berg's Bosek and Dorothy Schoen in Lulu, Golot in uh, Debussy, Filias at Melisande, and Nick Shadow in Stravinsky's The Rake's Progress. But also, contemporary opera has an important part in Hensel's repertoire. Many great composers, such as Peter Edbes, that passed away uh, the last March 24, uh, Dietrich uh, Garner, Manfred Soham, Peter Rusica, or Chaya Cernowe, entrusted him with import, important roles in the premieres of their works. In orchestral concerts, Hensel regularly works with conductors such as Sylvian Camberlain, Kazushi Ono, Cornelius Maista, and Vladimir Jurowski. Recordings with the greatest conductors John Elliott Gardiner, Philippe Herrebege, Nicolaus Harnoncourt, and Sir Colin Davis document his oratorio works. He has performed scenic versions of Schubert songs, cycles, among others. In the project, Irsal, a triptych of forbidden love, conceived together with the, with the director Clara Pons, orchestral songs by Hugo Wolf were combined with a feature film shot specially for the live performance. The great success of the project led to the follow-up project Wunderhorn, an international co-production involving eight partner institutions. Maestro, one of the first composers uh, studied in the career of John Music students is, of course, the great genius of Leipzig, Johann Sebastian Bach, for the brilliant difficulty of his music and above all, for its beauty and the way his music makes all of us be better as musicians. Bach musical papers are amazing methods and represent a singing school, but in your case, as a German singer, you have had the opportunity to listen to his music in church and not only in music school, like happened in America. Since you were a little child, what was your first experience with his music? Well, actually, my first experience with his music probably is beyond my memory because my t parents used to uh, put a vinyl record uh, for me to, to fall asleep at night. And uh, there was uh, certainly Bach included, but um, I think uh, the, the first memories of, conscious, um, of consciousness about music of, of Bach may be even uh, the uh, vinyl records of Jacques Lussier. 
uh, Jacques Lussier, the jazz pianist who did play Bach. And this okay. I listened to with a lot of fun at a very, very young age. Um, I mean, age between four and five years. And I used to listen to this music with, with the joy of a child. And um, the, uh, of course, then later on, the, the musical education of a young pianist, which I started with five years, uh, has a very important element. This is this Kleine Notenbüchlein für Anna Magdalena Bach. And of course, these melodies I have played as a young child. Um, the uh, an, another very nice memory that I have was a re recording, a, a record, a vinyl record that um, my parents gave to me at a very young age as well. I think it was somewhat my my sixth birthday. Um, the the group that performed there was called the Swingle Singers, and they did a vocalized Bach fugues. Um, I like that in, in this style yeah. and uh, the, the polyphonic music performed in this style may have also a very important influence to my musical thinking now, to my musical brain, which was formed by Bach very early. Yeah, we can say you grow up with music uh, written by Bach, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let, let, let us say this music has in all styles uh, of music such an omnipresence that one, one cannot escape it really. <laughs> so it is forming, <laughs> yeah. our, is forming our, our subconscious uh, without us knowing. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, uh, the next question is, if you will, a bit absurd, but we must hear it from a German specialist of your category. What does Bach represent for Germany and its people? And how do you uh, and how do German people assume this music that is so theirs, even without being musicians? Well, that's a very difficult question, because this is not, um, from my experience, this is not a constant thing. Um, it has developed a lot in in the last, yeah, let's say, fifty years since I can okay. think back. Um, so the the it, when I grew up and I used to play a lot of Bach on the piano, this was okay. the music which I, which I really um, l liked best in a way, because it's, it's okay. uh, very much corresponding to my musical thinking, this polyphonic style. But always, well, I, had, I had friends who, who liked classical music as well, because this is nowadays it's completely different. So many people don't have any idea of classical or baroque music um, that that uh, you, well for, for them Bach has no more real meaning in in in, in person. But um, at, when when I grew up and I had friends who were also con yeah well so, sort of sort of listening to classical music. Um, some of them would like it and be, be fascinated by it, but many of them did not like it at all. Okay. They hated Bach okay. even because of his um, intellectual demand. Bach is not music yeah. which you can hear as a background music. It obliges you to follow what he's, he's uh, presenting to you. And uh, the music, okay. uh, he, his music is, is so demanding, so intellectually demanding, that there are people pro and people contra it. And this has been like that uh, when I was a child or when I was a young, young adolescent. But um, nowadays, I'd say, uh, uh, in general, bass music has th these, these complete lovers, and bass music has those who are a bit neutral, who, who are a bit neutral to it. Um, but I think he has no real enemies. Yeah. Yeah, here in Venezuela, uh, for musicians, it's difficult to do uh, Bach music because it's so difficult. It's, uh, people are not prepared to, to study Bach uh, out of the school, out of the, the music, musical school. Um, and Bach in Venezuela, it's uh, like uh, a method 
not 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 just a composer with beautiful music it's like a method to be better as a musician but uh, in this season Bach is is uh, for me one of the yeah the first uh, opportunity that have uh, musicians to do this music out of the school out of the the, mm -hmm. the classroom okay mm -hmm. and how do you think Bach has influenced all your country and especially your career well if you see the country then you should uh, um well historically go back until to that time um when when bach was active so when he lived um yeah this country has become a country a complete country later much later, 100 years after Bach was, um, was active. But um, I'd say in this time when, when Germany became, uh, became this country, Germany, uh, out of yeah. uh, historically a, a bunch of, of little states, um, then he, the music, well, it was the time when Bach's music just was about to be rediscovered. 100 years after his death and people like romantic composers like Mendelssohn and uh, uh, and his uh, uh, well yeah let, let's say let, the, and people of his time uh, rediscovered the music of Bach and found found out about its fantastic uh, uh, greatness about its fantastic yeah. uh, um, uh, art and th then in these times music was not omnipresent music was a special thing you had to to go to a concert to listen to music or well you you you, you could not just turn the radio on and in the in these times uh before the invention of the radio um bach was a thing you got in churches at the organ you got you got uh, in as choral melodies in church and you got it um well now rediscovered by these uh, composers like Mendelssohn brought to public concert halls and it became very very important also because of its intellectual content and its musical content it influenced so many composers and these composers were more important than a composer nowadays is because this yeah. was the yeah. only music which was going around there you know, apart from folks music in in in, in the street but uh, but the, the only serious music and um, I, I, I'd say with the development of, uh, 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 of, 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 of the modern way to receive music uh, with the radio and so on, um, the, the importance of Bach uh, has even grown, has even become bigger because of his um, fascinating um, influence also on modern on, on modern music on jazz on even even yeah. uh, even the, the pop music of our times refers to bass music often yeah. um, so the the um, uh, he, his his influence on music is not to be uh, uh, overestimated over yeah my music uh, okay my music um, history teacher uh, told us that Bach contained all music, all kinds of music in his uh, repertoire, jazz, uh, ballads, um, even uh, um, romantic uh, sounds and, and, and that uh, phrases and that amazing mm -hmm. uh, chorals. And, and yes, that's right. The, right. the art of polyphonic music uh, is yeah. uh, he, his art of polyphonic music is so complete that uh, it was studied by all sorts of musicians. So in but you, are, you yeah. have also asked what is his importance, um, not only for musicians. For musicians, it's absolutely evident that that he is extremely important. But um, for normal people, well. In the time before the radio was was brought brought up, um, the, um, the, their their uh, reception of Bach in churches was given. So he had a very very high influence on musical on, on, on musical people yeah. of all sorts, even not musicians. 
And um, his, his melodies are also connected to all the religious feasts. Um, yeah. And yeah, well, I, I'd say he is extremely popular and extremely, extremely important also in terms of uh, the, the philosophy he transports with his music. His cantatas and his uh, oratories, they have a message, and this is the message of, of the Christian, Christian God. Yeah. And um, this, this also has had a very, very high influence on, on the society of Germany. I remember when I was uh, 15 or, year, or 16 years old, I began uh, my studies in, in music school, uh, like a, a singer, a, a student of lyrical thinking. So, and my professor uh, gave me an aria in the second grade, second year of my studies, uh, the aria Et in Spiritum Sanctum Dominum. She uh, told me that that aria uh, was not for a student in the second year, uh, but um, in the five or six year of, the, of of his studies. But I began to study that area, and I remember my principal reference of how to sing that area, how to uh, study the all the coloratura and all the phrases was you, was your in, your performance of that area. I I didn't remember if you uh, were singing with uh, Maestro John Nelson or uh, Gardiner. But I have to ask both, you. Both is possible. I think there exist recordings with both of them. So I don't know yeah. which one you probably may have in mind. But with Maestro John Nelson, I recorded this in uh, the uh, Cathedral uh, Notre Dame in Paris. And it was a very wow. nice TV production at that time uh, in the old yeah. church, which does not exist anymore because it burned down a couple of years ago. Um, but this was, a, a, well, I, I have a very nice memory of this concert. And of course, uh, the video does of exist. Course. So did you see it on video uh, or was it uh, only acoustically? Amazing, amazing. It was for me uh, like uh, discover uh, a voice so near Bach, so, so uh, flexive and uh, and, and soft and, and with that tenderness in the phrases, in the long phrases and difficult uh, um, melodies, yeah. And thank you, Master, I'm a fan of you. And I have to ask you, how were the first years of study music in your country? And, and, and how was your meeting with Bach music as a singer? Um, for, for me, I, I have had a very, very, uh, very great luck with my school that I uh, went to because when, when it came out that I was a very musical child, my parents allowed me to fulfill my, my um, wish to, to, uh, well, to, to, go my, to go my road towards fulfilling my wish to become a professional musician, which was there very early. I, with eight years, I knew I wanted to become a musician. Uh, at that time, I thought of conducting most. And um, with 10 years, I went to, uh, yeah, to, to, we, we call it Musisches Gymnasium in Germany, to a school with, with a focus on music. And I was getting singing lessons at the age of 10. And I was getting piano okay. lessons. And uh, I was getting uh, very early uh, lessons also in, in other instruments because I wanted to become a, a conductor. So I needed to know uh, a string instrument and also a, a wind instrument. So I, I learned flute and I learned violoncello and all these things were nice experiences. Um, so the, 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 we, we, we were trained at school every day uh, for hours. And uh, we had a choir, school's choir, which performed, for instance, the Christmas Oratory of, of Bach. Um, but uh, yeah, well, this, this, was, this was great luck. It was an exception also in Germany to find a school like that. And it was um, the, the pr principally, it was the basic for my musical, for, for my, my, my professional existence as a musician, which was set already at that early age. Um, okay. the, the music of Bach was um, 
the first thing to play in every piano lesson. You played okay. an invention or a fugue, or you played um, uh, uh, the, the well-tempered piano and so on. So throughout my entire uh, professional studies of the piano, I was having Bach as a daily dose. So okay. uh, this is uh, uh, also a, a, a very, very important fact. This music, you, you grow into it with, with such steadiness in this, in, in this way of uh, yeah, studies of, of, of becoming a professional musician that uh, I'd say certainly Bach is the most important influence in my entire uh, yeah, uh, my in, 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 entire uh, musical life. And um, even nowadays, if I'm uh, preparing for a rehearsal of whatever piece, uh, I start, I like to start my, my musical day with playing Bach on the piano. Okay. Do you remember what was the first area that you studied uh, written by Bach? Well, at the age of or, 10 years. Or was yes. the, the, the Christmas Oratorio? No. Actually, um, okay. before, we, before I was allowed to participate at these um, uh, choir, uh, school choir performances, uh, I, I was brought uh, to, to a, a singing teacher, the singing teacher of our school, uh, who actually, this is really surprising because I, I don't know anybody else who would do so nowadays. Uh, she gave us uh, melodies from the Schemeli songbook by Bach, from the okay. uh, songbook uh, with, with songs, uh, Schemeli collection. Half of them are by Bach and the other half are uh, only um, transcriptions of his. But this was the first um, solo melody I ever sang uh, by Bach was okay. Dear, Dear Jehova Will Ich Singen. And uh, also no, oh, be before that, uh, Christmas songs like Ich stehe an deiner Krippen here, also from the Schumeli songbook. That, of course, very, very much earlier. So already with five years, I might have sang that. This might be the, the first uh, active um, um, ex execution of a, a vocal line of Bach by me. Um, choral wise, yeah, I of course, remember these performances of the Christmas oratory which were, um, uh, well, we, we did this in, in uh, f three consecutive years, each year newly, uh, the, the different cantatas, well, the, part one to three and uh, part uh, four to six. Um, and it was actually, um, I think, uh, w w the, the entire school made a feast out of it. So we, we were preparing this for, for months and we were having, uh, uh, well, t uh, s yeah, well, study phases where we went to a, to a, a place, uh, well, ab abroad and, and studied the entire day this music and we were singing it the entire day, among other things that we did on there, like, like uh, uh, um, chamber music and, and what, it was all musically linked at that school. That was our great luck. So Christmas Oratory certainly was one of the early experiences with Bach as well. Amazing. That, that areas are uh, amazing and, and so beautiful and wonderful. Uh, you have worked and recorded music with the most important Bach experts, people like John Elliot Gardiner, John Nelson, uh, Maestro Herre Wege, Nicolaus Harnoncourt, Sir Colin Davis, and many more. Tell us about that meeting and all the musical process next to that famous conductors. Okay. In the case um, of Gardiner, for example. For example, let me first correct a uh, uh, thing with Sir Colin Davis. I performed only um, the creation by okay. Haydn, never Bach. Okay. Um, okay. But okay. I, okay. I may replace this name by another very important um, uh, uh, experience that I made with Bach's music, and this is Semyon Bishkov. Um, Okay. I mentioned his name because I did uh, the B minor mass with him and Vienna Philharmonics uh, with, in, in a very romantic style. 
and in, in a style, okay. in, in, a, in a performance, uh, old fashioned performance, let's say, old style uh, performance without the influence of uh, um, the, the, the historically correct Bach playing that Gardiner and, and uh, Arnold Graf invented. But uh, this okay. performance was nevertheless very, very interesting and very, very beautiful. And um, that, that's the genius of this music. Um, it does not depend on a correct way to be performed. It just needs uh, a way to be performed with, uh, with an aesthetic total, with a total aesthetic um, overview. Let us say yeah. um, with Vienna Philharmonics, I also have performed Bach um, under the okay. conductor Herrewege, and it was completely different. He uh, made them learn how to play an instrumental line um, according to the vocal line and the words of the vocal line. So he made the instrumentalists play their musical lines as if they have, would, would been singing. And um, this is a little bit contrary of what you are are taught at school that you should sing as like like an instrument. Um, so the this contradiction is completely uh, unimportant from the moment where the instrumentalist plays a vocal line, <laughs> then your vocal line gets instrumental as well. That is the genius of Philip yeah. Eirig's, uh, um, uh, yeah, well, approach yeah, to and this do, music. And you, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and you did uh, two videos for uh, the Monteverdi Choir about the cantatas. You um, had the opportunity to, to make uh, that cantatas with Monteverdi Choir by the conducting or direction of uh, Maestro Gardiner. Yeah, yeah well, uh, this was a fantastic um, project of Gardiner and the Monteverdi Choir to perform all Bach cantatas, hundreds Amazing. of Bach cantatas, in yeah, one year. and each of them wow. on that Sunday church uh, uh, Sunday, which they were written for. So okay. every week, week a concert with three or four cantatas. Um, wow. This made us. <laughs> this made this made us travel around um, with, yeah. with with uh, two groups of musicians. Cause it was too well. You, you, the, 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 they needed two casts. Um, in the orchestra to play, uh, well, to, to play throughout the entire year. And the challenge was extreme and the, the, <laughs> the skill, yeah, so difficult. Of, the, the <laughs> skills of these musicians of, of all of us grew so yeah. much into it. Um, by performing Bach every week or several times per week or, um, yeah, rehearsing Bach every day uh, with new music uh, ma made such a, a gave us such an ease with his music by the end that uh, we would read his music like like one reads a book, uh, yeah. like just just understand it differently right from the first view onto it, and that that was a great great event. Uh, yeah, I have to course. say that uh, the, the, the craziness of that project uh, was not being believed uh, beforehand. Uh, in the middle of that year, all people, including the Monteverdi Choir and Gardiner and his Baroque solists and all, all participating solists, realized, wow, this is really going to happen. It's really working. No one was, was so sure before this project yeah. had started and before it was in the middle of it. And then we realized what great project this was, and it was a, a real, a real, uh, yeah, pilgrimage. It was a pilgrimage on uh, on the traces of Bach. Yeah, and after that, I am sure you become, in a way of uh, like a family, because all that time re in, in rehearsals, study Bach, singing Bach, and, and all that amazing process. Without that, it's like uh, become all of you like a family, yeah? Yeah, in a way, uh, I'd, I'd not go so far to say it's a family because 
there are too okay. many people are are um, uh, are okay. participating to build a real family. But yeah. stylistically, yeah. stylistically, and <laughs> uh, in in terms of well, you you have to know this is very important. All soloists also have been participating at all choir numbers. So there was not this, okay. this uh, difference between a soloist and a choir member, because this is, this is the fantastic principle of Gardiner. Uh, all uh, people in this choir could sing every solo. And, uh, okay. and, 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 and you learn from each other by standing next to the others in the choir. Yeah. And you learn the way how to do an ornament, and you learn how to do a coloratura, or uh, how to articulate. This is uh, a, a lot easier to learn when when you are in a group. And therefore, I'd, I'd also say my my nicest performance of the mentioned uh, uh, B minor mass, where Et in Spiritum Sanctum is from, which you which you have yeah. studied at, at yeah. your second. Yeah. I love that um, aria. Yeah. The, the, the nicest performance, or the, the, or the greatest performance of that piece that I have in memory was without any doubt the performance that we did at the Proms in London with the Monteverdi uh, choir and the, the Baroque soloists. Um, when, when I was allowed to sing all choir numbers with the choir and then just step out to sing the, the bass arias. Um, okay. This makes it so much a total performance for me, and it makes it makes it also easier to sing these areas. Um, it makes it easier to be prepared by uh, three quarters of an hour of, of choral music of highest level of highest difficulty. Then you go into these areas, and then they are easy. The choir numbers are, are so difficult to sing and so difficult to control that you are in, then perfectly prepared to go over to some easy solo stuff. And then these areas uh, lose their, their, um, what, their gravitude. They, they get just yeah. light and easy. And, and they get dances. Both of these areas are dances, actually. And what, what you have to see is that this mass in, in B minor is a piece by Bach uh, written for a Catholic church but Bach was a Protestant Christ so yeah, yeah. Um, th there is um, the, the, the fact that he makes these these uh, um, musical numbers so uh, so light and so so so, so dancing, dancing like was a personal statement of a member from one church to another well, Amazing. having said this, um, let's go back maybe to uh, to the performances of uh, yeah, um, Gardiner, Herwege, Arnoncourt. I with Arnoncourt, I have also done a recording of Saint Matthew Passion, like with okay. Herwege. Um, but at this recording, I do have um, a strange memory because we never performed it. We only did the recording, and that means as a soloist, you go there, you do your numbers, and you go off. And okay, this was not the way I need to perform this piece. I have to say. So this the recording is, is a very very nice recording, and uh, of course without any doubt very important recording. But my memory of it is a bit poor. Because it was not a performance, it was not um, a question, a, a, a real passion. And St. Matthew's passion should be full of passion. Yeah, yeah, without doubts. And what do you think about the way Bach wrote the areas for, for basso or for baritone? Uh, we know that baritone, it's a, it's a voice recognized uh, many, many years after okay, after Bach. But in that time, Bach wrote, uh, for example, in the mass, the B minor, the arias, uh, I th think, or a baritone. I, I think um, Bach has written all his music yeah. for specific members of his choir. So yeah. he must have had higher singers, higher baritones, lower yeah. baritones, 
deep bass voices in his choir. Uh, and this was, uh, the, the, well, the, uh, for a long time of his life, it was the Thomas Chor in Leipzig with uh, young singers. So you, you can't, you can't um, really say Bach has not uh, uh, written for baritone because half of his singers must have been higher baritones. But yeah, yeah. he also has had, uh, and th that's very funny, these uh, voices which demand great authority, like yeah. the voice of Jesus. He mostly yeah, has, has given um, to people with um, a little lower uh, voice, meaning probably to some little older people. He has not made little boys sing these uh, authoritative areas. And um, as, a, as a baritone, well, it is, if, you, if you're going to perform, for instance, St. John's Passion as Jesus, there are these moments where you have to have a low F. Yeah. Yeah. There's this very, very famous place, Stärke dein Schwert in die Scheibe. And this, yeah. so many singers yeah. don't have it. Because it's, it's and, and what you hear in performances then, in particular with, with um, uh, uh, young singers, uh, that they are really afraid of that place. Yeah, it's difficult. One should, yeah, never, one should never forget that, so, that such places are in the middle of a recitative. And in a recitative, yeah. you are allowed to speak your text if you want to. You, 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 yeah. there, there is no obligation to have the voice of an organ to do a, a, play, a, a piece like that. Um, you, 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 it, have, yeah. you, 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 you can just read, read it. A recitative is a reading of a text. And then um, also a, a lighter baritone may, might be able to sing Jesus in uh, St. John's Passion. Um, yeah. I'd say in Because it's, it's different. It's different uh, to sing, for example, the B minor mass, the arias, quonium, or et in spiritum sanctum dominum. It's it's uh, different for, for singer, uh, uh, for example, um, the Magedich of uh, mm -hmm. St. Matthew's uh, Passion, or the Am Abend, the recitative uh, uh, before uh, yeah. the aria, Magedich. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, well, it, the, the Evidence in, in uh, B minor mass is very, very big that this is written for two singers and not for one singer. Because uh, yeah. the, the second uh, uh, aria is uh, so high, and but <laughs> interestingly, um, well, the, the first aria is very low, the second aria is very high in tessitura in general, yeah. but the second aria has the lowest tone. Look, yeah. Putus yeah. is tapcofetas, is a low uh, F sharp. And this he demands from the singer who sings the high area. So uh, he must have had a singer with a so-called very long testitura and another one with a very uh, dark and, and bassoon-like uh, voice because it's the horns and the bassoons which are playing the accompaniment of, or the other, the, the, you can say, which play this, the, the orchestra structure for the first area. So, um, Bach, Bach's music is absolute, uh, meaning you also can perform, could perform this without a singer and just using another instrument. But it's also uh, completely linked to the meaning of the word. So you could, could understand yeah. a, a, a bassoon singing these words. <laughs> and yeah. and it's, yeah. it's, the, 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 these boundaries are floating. Um, Bach, yeah, in a way, Bach, uh, Bach is very, wrote, very, very yeah. cha challenging, very challenging for yeah, not so low bass voices, but also yeah. for very low bass voices, th th then, then the higher parts are tricky. It needs a very good technique, that's for sure. And it's interesting when, when we study this area and, and add more similar to the another voices, uh, arias, uh, soprano, or even tenor, because Bach wrote uh, so much movement for the bass or baritone voice. Uh, 
and are not, are not uh, similar to the sopranos uh, arias that are so um, with a line, without movements. Uh, of course, all the, uh, the repertoire of uh, reading by Bach has, uh, have so many arias, uh, different arias, but it's um, really interesting how Bach wrote for the baritone boys or bass boys uh, with so many movement and not and not and not just that long lines but full of coloratura <laughs> and with all uh, with movement yeah 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 the, the it's it's so fascinating um yeah he has so many ways um to use the voice uh that you really need to train your voice like an instrument yeah. in all virtuous aspects and in all uh, cantilene aspects. So it's um, yeah. it's uh, it's one of the most complex challenges uh, in music, the music by Bach. Because he demands it all. Yes, when a singer has the opportunity to make music with this amazing artists like Gardner Nelson. Without doubt, he becomes one too. It will depend on experience, years of study and closeness. But in your case, Maestro, you're one of the baritones who has sung Bach the most. How should Bach be sung? And I, I know uh, that you're, you were talking about that, but especially uh, like uh, as a singer and as a baritone, how should Bach be sung? Well, my uh, special tip would, would be read it, read the words, pronounce the words, and they are the first key to his musical line, even in coloratura. Articulate um, the consonants that way that you anticipate the consonants before the uh, 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 main note, meaning if you if you sing um, quoniam, anticipate the k of quoniam, and be yeah. on the beat with oniam, so meaning quoniam, and not quoniam, quoniam. Yeah. I really anticipate it. And this gives and that a first, lot, first a lot phrase, of structure. Yeah. Go, go continuously through the entire um, uh, line and, and through the entire phrase. This also gives a hint how the, the instrumentalists have to play it. They have to articulate in a similar way, except it's... Um, it's uh, demanded differently it's it's expressive well it, 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 it's said by by musical um, note that that they should articulate differently but if nothing else is given um it is a good way also for the instrumentalists uh to uh to, to co copy the speech it is rhetorical uh, music it is it is a musical speech what bach does always, even if he's highly virtuous and in coloratura, it is illustrating a speech. That's the key which I would recommend for every singer, yeah. for every singer in, if, if, to the music of Bach. Thank you, Maestro. Uh, in that area, uh, the quonium, it was, for me, it was so difficult to keep the legato from the first word. The that uh, I, I remember it's uh, a, a note, but so difficult to keep the legato in that phrase. That area, it's, it's amazing, but it's so difficult. But it's also okay. a, very, very, a very good area to train this difficulty, yeah. to connect, yeah. completely connect, and not do yeah. Yeah. You need to connect. Yeah all these um, uh, uh, intervals by, with, with, with complete uh, vocal connection, like a violinist who would do uh, a change of uh, the, the, 
or what is lage in English? I don't know the English word for it. But you should all, all lines um, use as expressive lines. Also in this instrumental music, in this very instrument instrumental like music. Yeah. What aria written by Bach do you still have and want to sing? All of them again. <laughs> you, you can't yeah. stop it. It's it's difficult to say. Um, there are uh, fantastic coloratura arias in some of the of the cantatas where you uh, where you think this is what he demands here is is superhuman. Actually, it's not. It's it's uh, <laughs> yeah. it's just it demands expertise and and technique. Um, they are all so challenging and. I cannot say there is one which I well actually um, those which come often in the Christmas oratorio in, in the passions uh, yeah. they are so nice I would like to sing them again and again and again and again but also <laughs> all these cantatas I'd, I'd, <laughs> yeah. I'd, I'd, the, the best would be to do another Bach cantata pilgrimage singing all the music by Bach uh, throughout the entire year yeah, I'm sure of that uh, talking about the demands of singing Bach, in your opinion, uh, what should a competent singer be like? Singing Bach and, and singing Lieder, for example. Um, one should be aware of the text, one should be aware of the articulation, one should be aware of the content, and yeah. not, not to forget that, but when, one should see oneself as a part of an entire piece, that your line is one line in the entire thing. You are not uh, the solo player with a, an accompaniment. You are, um, the, you are having one line and the others are as important as you are. Meaning the total of the music must be part of your understanding of it. So, uh, study the, the lines of the others as well. And okay. be poly okay. yeah, think, think polyphonic. <laughs> A word or an expression that comes to your mind after the following mentions. First, B minor mass. Um, humor and, and maybe even irony. Okay, Saint Matthew's Passion. The cruelty of human beings. Wow. Grosser Herr und starker König. Let's dance it. Germany. At the same time, I'm my home country and a big obligation. Okay, Baroque music. Mm. Mostly dance. Okay, baritone voice. As much my, my, my own voice as my own obligation. Okay. Claudio Monteverdi. Another one who had the direct contact and direct line to God. Definitely. Monteverdi Choir. A group of passionate musicians led by a a genius and crazy leader, which, <laughs> which is um, a living example for the fact that the music of this hemisphere is a shared cultural um, good, shared cultural asset. Okay, Mozart. His first symphony 
is with the same maturity as his last, written with the same maturity as his last, although at the age of six years, completely ununderstandable, this sort of genius. Okay. Lida. Uh, a cosmos as big and as great as the real cosmos. Wow. Schubert. He knew how to make your soul speak. Uber Wolf. Ah. Uh, <laughs> I a love a your crazy, interpretation of a both crazy music. Rom a crazy romantic fighter. Okay. Iphigeni in Aulis, the opera that you are singing now, uh, right now. Mm -hmm. A progressive statement to humanity, society, politics, and, and a, a music which 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 tried to renew to renew a system which was a bit which had become a bit stiff okay and talking about this opera um and your you won a grammy award you have recorded important music with major record labels Recently, you sang the opera Sik di Shanghai by Telemann, and now you're singing this amazing opera written by Gluck. What are your current goals? What do you dream with right now? Well, um, I should mention in, in, in this moment, uh, maybe the one of these dreams which I'm carrying around with me since uh, since some time, um, at the very beginning of my career, I, my, actually my first international, no, my first intercontinental flight I ever did was connected to a performance of Bach, of Bach's Kaffee Cantate, Coffee Cantata, um, in Caracas. In, in Caracas, under the lead of Maria Guino, whom we will talk to later on today, as I have yeah. learned. Yeah. And it is so funny. Um, at that time, I was in uh, company with uh, another singer sent by the Bach Academy Stuttgart. By the way, another uh, very important element in my career, Helmut yeah. Riddings Bach Academy Stuttgart was forming so many musicians to, to, um, to the understanding of, of Bach's music. And at that time, he sent me uh, with the president of the of the Republic of Germany, um, he sent me to uh, Venezuela for representative reasons, and I went there and I learned how wonderful music can be used. Um, how wonderful music can be used as an as, as, as a, a, an educational perspective for young people. And one of these dreams is to do a trip like that again and to work with young people and to give some of my experience, in particular with the music of Bach, to younger people and to make them understand it a bit in the way that, that I have learned when I was a young boy. So this would thank be a you, dream Maestro. of mine. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, you did it in this live for me and for many people uh, that are listening to you. Uh, the composer, Joiner Simanca, Venezuelan composer, uh, wrote, this is the first time I hear a singer say to listen to the others as they are equally important. I'm a composer, so I agree. Genius point, especially in Bach music, since he always used counterpoint. Yes. 
Yeah. That's absolutely, Indeed, uh, absolutely true. <laughs> yeah, and, and he said, greetings from Venezuela, Maestro. I'm learning a lot from your experience, such an honor. And me too, me too. Thank you, Maestro. For me, it's a pleasure, it's an honor, it's a huge and amazing blessing to present you in this season back, uh, like for us, one of the most amazing singers uh, in this time, baritone and conductor and, and, and an, an amazing artist and Bach voice. For me, I'm your fan, I love you and I admire you, uh, uh, like Handel wrote in, in the Messiah, forever and ever. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. It was a great joy to be with you. Thank you, Maestro. Thanks. See you soon and my best wishes from Venezuela. A, a big hug and for you all the best. Thank you. Always. And, and the same I, I sent back. Bye. Bye, Maestro. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, 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 ah,